Now, unfortunately, I think it's time to trade Anthony Sorelli. Now going live to the team mathematician TJP, he says that Sujimoto is already 29. One more year and he's going to be 30. That is some groundbreaking work right there. Excellent math, keep it up. I'm just giving you a hard time, it's true. He is almost 30 years old. What's going on guys and welcome back to your Saskatchewan Stags with the almost 30 year old Taro Sujimoto who is ripping it up right now, 41 points in 24 games. Now I'm gonna say right now, pause the video, go get yourself a snack, but not any snack, something just to chill out with, maybe some ice cream, something just to you know relax, calm down, because in this video, we are going to be going through and looking around the National Hockey League as well as maybe doing some more simulation depending on how long that takes. I definitely want to look at all the players that we created. Oscar Gormley, Boris Yakupov, all of those other guys, the guys that you ended up creating to put in this franchise mode. I want to have a look at everyone. I want to see some former players. What's up, Michael Dalgol? Looking at you. Also going to see what's up with Chaika, all the former players we traded away, and just kind of see what the state of the NHL is in and of course we always want to see who has the best team in hockey that's always fun we got a couple of comments here the first one comes from Adam he says did you see Cole Perfetti during the Team Canada shootout in the Halinka Gretzky tournament what a legend oh my god the tweets I was getting about this guy this guy is a shootout god he is killing it or I guess he did kill it for Team Canada in the Halinka Gretzky cup that was just nuts he was one of if not the best player on the ice he was a monster and he is a saskatchewan stag you'd love to see that now we got to give some respect to norm clarkson who has 22 points in 24 games as a third line center this guy is a beast former first round pick of the montreal Canadiens. thank you very much you know who we can thank for that do you know who we can thank for that? Mr. Adam freaking Larson, the best guy in the entire world. We ended up getting a first, which ended up being a lottery pick, which I believe was Cole Perfetti. Am I right there? What year was he drafted? 2020. Did we have him in 2020? Uh, no, it might have. I don't know if it was the Cole Perfetti trade. We've made so many trades, honestly, at, at this point, I just can't keep track of them all. We ended up acquiring Norm Clarkson kind of just as like a throw in, and he's actually turned out to be such a good player for us. So, shout out to Norm Clarkson. What a beast. Now, discussing the Kovalchuk Manor, he was our third line uh, defenseman we picked up from Pittsburgh in the big move that sent Kyle Connor to the Penguins. Now, he only has one assist in 24 games, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw him on the power play. This guy says, definitely play Kovalchuk on the power play and take Bowen Byram out. Kovalchuk may develop into a very good defenseman if he gets enough ice time. I agree with you. So, Kovalchuk, welcome to the power play. I'm going to put him alongside of Boquist, try to give him the most points possible and do I split up the big three um you know what actually I'm gonna put Profetti with the Japanese boys and then put Hiroyuki with DeBoer and Chubbs let's try that actually just because it makes more sense Aguchi has 99 face-offs this guy's never lost a draw in his entire life Gonna go ahead and throw him in the middle. Obviously, it makes most sense. Sujimoto gonna play there. Boom, boom, how are you? Keep the change. Now, we still have to figure something out with the scratch player we have, and that is going to be Marcus. Marcus the Snake with two S's. Marcus Ovechkin. He has to play this year. He has to play. It's It's gone on way too long. So, is it time to trade Anthony Sorelli? I mean, I'm a big Anthony Sorelli fan. You guys know he's my number one guy. Either we trade him, we trade the big kid from Edmonton, we trade Franzen. I don't really know what to do. Um, we do want to hang on to Gino. He's doing great on the third line. I don't want to touch that third line. So it's going to have to be one of these players is going to have to go. And unfortunately, I think it might be Sorelli. But we're going to have to deal with that after we go through the NHL. We're going to have a look at everyone around the league, some former players. We're going to see if Huxley is finally playing with the Arizona Coyotes. I think we checked last time he was a third liner, but he should be playing up a little bit higher. So go ahead, get yourself a snack. Let me know what you got in the comments, and let's go over the entire NHL. 
The Ducks are stacked offensively. Their top six is nasty. I believe this guy was a first overall pick. Yeah, that's right. I remember him being first overall. He's a monster. This Nicholas guy was tw was a 22nd overall pick, and he turned out to be nasty. He's kind of like a Brock Besser kind of player, like a late first sniper. What a beast. Uh, Barney Steele. Yeah, they're, they're looking good. No former players on their forward core. Defensively, it's not great. They're definitely being carried by their offense, that's for sure. They don't have a goalie though. Uh, Alexander Georgiev and David Riddick. So yeah, they're definitely being held by their forward core, that's for sure. And Huxley, where is he? Oh my god. They need a second line winger. Oh, let's play our best second line winger on the fourth line. We're a bunch of geniuses over here in Arizona. You guys are dumb. What are you doing? Play him in its correct position. You idiots. Oh my god. Well, Arizona does have a nasty team. They have Nikolai Koroyuk, who is a second rounder. Not a bad second round pick at all. Tim Maratta, who I believe is the guy with an insane passing. Yeah, there he is. 96 passing, 20 apples on the year. And the man, the myth, the legend, Agent C. Cedric Corey. How's it going, buddy? Back to back of almost 60 goals. Don't call him Pavel Bure. He had 59 a couple years ago. Knocking on the 60 goal door. Can't quite break it. Came close a couple times not quite the Cedric Corey that we knew in Seattle was still probably one of the best if not the best sniper in the NHL their center depth is pretty damn good with Chucky there 91 overall Christian Fisher Bergenheim looking for some former players here Jacob Chikrin again their D is a little bit weak and between the pipes they have Julian Regeer who is a franchise in the third round damn all right, and then they got Cademan Brooks, who's a medium elite starting goalie. So looking good between the pipes in Arizona there, that's for sure. The Bruins, oh man, where is he? Oh, that's right, he went to free agency. So we'll see where Braden Shen ended up signing the uh, Bruins anymore. But Jake DeBrus, Ryan Suzuki, Pasta. So they kept a few of their players, but it's pretty much a brand new team. Danton Heinen, DeBrusque, Pasta, and I guess that's it. Trent Frederick uh, played as well. But aside from that, it's a completely new Bruins team. Defensively, it's basically Charlie McAvoy and no one else. Where is all your good players? Oh my god. I hope they have a good goalie. Oh my god, they don't. Boston, I'm so sorry for you guys. Jesus. That's a hurting team. That's probably the worst one we've seen. Now, Buffalo, they are stacked. Nylander, Eichel, Reinhardt, Cole Lynn, Sammy Blaze, Jeff Skinner, they're nasty. Tyler Toffoli, Jake Vertanen, they're looking good. Defensively, Hayden Fleury and Chaika, two former Saskatchewan Stags. So, unfortunately, Chaika hasn't really turned out to be the player that we thought he would be. Huxley was the big piece coming back for Chaika, and both of them kind of haven't really found their game. So, that's interesting. But Hayden Fleury, he was a big piece of our team for quite a while. Uh, he had 24 points, so he's still in the 20-ish, 25-point range kind of defenseman. He has 10 points in 24 games, so he's probably going to elapse that pretty quickly. He's playing with Risto. Their D's looking pretty good. As for the goalies, Uko Pekka Lukanen, what a name. The best name in hockey, that's for sure. The Carolina Hurricanes, Vinny Zapp. What's up, buddy? So he was a player that we created, one of you guys created, and I went ahead and threw him into the franchise mode. He's had a pretty good career. He had 60 goals a couple years ago, but he's a pretty consistent 40 Geno kind of guy, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, he scored a ton of goals. Doesn't really get a ton of assists, but you know he's good for 40 pretty much every single year. Uh, his passing's at 94, but, I mean, his shooting isn't even that crazy. It's kind of weird to see him score so much and not get that many assists, but he's a beast. Martin Nikash and then Andrei Svechnikov, Middlestat, Aho, Tara Vine. Look at their center depth. So we ended up taking Cole Profetti over Quinton Byfield, and I think we can all agree that we made the right choice. Can we all agree? Absolutely. That's a big win in my book. Uh, defensively, Morgan Riley, Jake Bean. Uh, it's, again, a pretty weak defensive core. Bullies, we got Mikey DiPietro and Gustafson. So, again, a team, another team that's being carried by their forward core. 
Now, I'm pretty sure this is the best team in the NHL, just on paper, aside from us. Panarin, Stamkos, Poyarvi, Shugren, Wenberg, Beach, Braxton Beach. Look at this guy, 90 overall, first overall, I think two years ago or the year before. He is an absolute machine. Sherbeck, Alexander Texier, I mean, Alexander Holtz, they're nasty. That's got to be the best team in the entire league. Uh, looking at defense, I mean, their defense is pretty damn good as well with Zach Wierenski. They got some young guys here. Yeah, they're looking good. Who's in between the pipes, Najelkovic and Berard? With an offense like this, you can afford not to have a star goalie between the pipes, but that's got to be one of the best teams in the entire league. It looks like Brayden Shen went to the Calgary Flames. All right, so he goes to a rival. All right, good to know. We got to throw him some games against Calgary, but uh, there he is. All right, Braden Shen going to Calgary uh, with Monahan, Peyton Krebs, Johnny Hockey, Andrew Maggiapani, who's an 88 overall. Okay, Zaitsev and Lindholm. So their top six is gross. Uh, their whole team is gross, actually. They have a really nice squad. Defensively, it's not fantastic. They don't have that stud, but they got a pretty decent, well rounded core. And then that's right, Carter Hart. What a beast. And then this Afinisankov guy. I recognize his name for some reason. But uh, Carter Hart, damn. He's a monster. And we signed that big free agent ticket, I think, a couple years ago. And then he went 45-14. and 14. He's getting paid a lot of money, 9.7 for the next three years. He is worth it, though. All right, now it's time to get into some creative players. Hulkenberg, Kilzakin, Seidenberg. Let's have a look at him. So Anthony Hulkenberg, 94 overall. He's a monster. He has 39 points. He's a pretty consistent 110-point player. That's insane. He is so damn good. Oh, my God. And, like, consistently good as well. You kind of know what you're getting from him. 50 goals, 50 assists. Like, that is just a hell of a player right there. Is he good in the postseason? Uh, I mean, yeah, he's over a point per game in the postseason, but... You know, don't got those Stanley Cups like us, baby. Should have been a stag. I kind of made Kill Zakin to be that, like, perfect power forward. And this is exactly what I wanted him to be. Like a like a 30 to 35 goal guy and like a 70 to 80 point guy. And he's kind of been exactly that for his entire career, which is pretty awesome. So there's him from the Hawks. Stanislav Varlamov. You think that guy's Russian? 86 overall Patrick Kane. So his career is coming to an end. They're pretty stacked as well. They have 83s all across the board. The lowest player is an 83 so yeah they're looking good um they got ivan listen and then finn seidenberg so here's the guy we were going to sign him in free agency i remember it was either between finn seidenberg or it was between uh sujimoto obviously we ended up going with sujimoto and honestly, I think we made the right choice, but Seidenberg is pretty nasty in his own right. Uh, he's paired up with Listen and they got Dermont, Yoki Haru, so not a bad team. This was their franchise guy. He's now exact elite, but he used to be uh, medium franchise or low franchise. Uh, he was drafted in the fourth round, so there you go. And they also have an 88 overall medium elite starting goalie who was drafted in the second round. So they got a bit of a goaltending controversy there in the Windy City. Pretty nice team, though, not going to lie. Oh, my God, talk about a nice team. Holy Rantanen, McKinnon, Marchand. You hate to see Marchand on that line. Uh, look at that name. Oh, my God, there's no way that guy's a real guy. Oh, he is, drafted in 2016. I guess that's a real player. What a name. The Commodore, they got a pretty good team as well. Um, defense, they have that one stud in Kale McCarr, and then a pretty nice surrounding core. Who's between the pipes? They got Kirk, Nugent Hopkins. Kind of cool to see all these goalies drafted in like either the fourth round or the fifth round turning into be starting tendies. It's pretty cool. Now we're very familiar with this team. Saskatchewan Stag legend Michael Dow goal. You're welcome for your career. We started you from nothing, made you into a legitimate NHLer. Hashtag make Michael Dow Cole a legitimate NHLer. That was our goal for a couple years and we achieved it. Uh, but unfortunately, it didn't work out in Saskatchewan. It did for a little bit, but he got moved around, and now he found a home in Dallas. We're very familiar with their squad. Obviously, beat them a couple times in the postseason. We know their defense is nasty, and we know they have Matt Murray and Philip Grubauer between the pipes. They have a very well-rounded team, though. They're pretty good. All right, Nika Solani and the stinky Detroit Red Wings. I don't know why the stinky players always go 
to Detroit. Felix Pox, Nika Solani, I don't know why, but he's a pretty consistent 70 goal guy, which is insane. Uh, three years in the Liga before coming over to the NHL and just been a consistent 100 point player. And he's probably going to be a consistent 100 point player for the rest of his career. He is a machine, genetically modified in a lab. Probably the best line in hockey with Mantha and Zadina. Now, that's no disrespect to the Japanese trio, but I don't know. What do you guys think in the comments? Would you give the best line in hockey to the Japanese three or Nika Solani, Anthony Mantha, and Philip Zadina? I'm just saying it's probably pretty even. I know all these guys are pretty consistent 100-point guys. Like, look at Zadina. Oh, my God. That's crazy. And I think Mantha is also pretty consistently a 100-point guy. Yeah, like sometimes he'll have 124 points, sometimes he'll have 87, but he's generally a 100-point guy, which is pretty crazy. Uh, Cole Caulfield as well, I made him really small. He actually grew. I think I made him as small as he could be, but I guess he grew in-game. Cole Caulfield with Lawrence and Penner, so a pretty small line, 5'8", 5'9", 5'10". Uh, Roberto Cassian, Joe Valeno. Kind of interesting to see him not turn out to be the player everyone thought he would. I think he has medium elite potential or high top six. Kind of interesting that he didn't turn out to be anything. Uh, defensively, Chalowski, Puglia. Okay, their D is weak. And between the pipes, they have UC Soros. Right, I remember that. So, I mean, their offense is nasty. I mean, their top six is nasty. It kind of falls off a little bit here, but a pretty decent team nonetheless. All right, Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. Chase Versi. Remember this guy? We were all super pumped when Edmonton drafted him because they finally drafted a player to play with McDavid, and it's actually been working out because he scored 100 points a couple times, multiple 50-goal years, 44 last year. So playing with McDavid has definitely helped. For a while there, it got a little bit embarrassing when Edmonton kept going through players to play with Connor, but it looks like they found a pretty good winger there in Chase Versi with Kaylor Yamamoto. Uh, Sprong, Leon, and Jacobs, Isaiah Jacobs. So that's kind of the thing with Edmonton. You're going to pay your big two guys a bunch of money and then kind of put a bunch of just random players in your bottom six and on your second line wings like Daniel Sprong. But still a nice looking offense, that's for sure. Now defensively, this is interesting because they drafted Dustin Primo, I think fifth overall. Yeah, there he is, fifth overall. And then they got Arkhipov, who I believe was third. Yeah, so he was, he was a super high pick. So that worked out there. They got Arkhipov and Primo. A really young, excellent one-two punch there with Bouchard and Nurse. That's looking pretty good in Edmonton. And, of course, they don't have a goalie because Edmonton. Florida, oh boy. Oscar Gormley, 98 overall. When I made this guy, I didn't expect him to be this good. I made him, like, just as good as Hulkenberg. I made them all just as good. But, wow, what a beast. 70 goals a year, pretty much. He has the NHL record for most goals in one season with 96, which is just bananas. Yeah, he is a freak of nature. He's probably the best player in the NHL. He's over a point per game this year. He's playing with Tanner Pearson and Jonathan Huberdeau. The easiest job for Tanner Pearson. Just stand in front of the net and good things will happen. They got Ariel Getzlaff, Alexander Barkov. Oh, yeah, they also have Alexander Barkov on their second line. They got Hepo Niemi on their third you can make a pretty good argument this is one of the best teams in the league as well. Aaron Ekblad, Victor Nechuskin, Will Butcher, please have a goalie. They do, of course. Ed McPherson, right. One of the creative players that you guys helped me make, and he's a beast. So Florida's looking really, really good. They're definitely in my top five. All right, the Los Angeles Kings. So Raymond, we ended up passing on this guy in the draft. He was 10th. I believe we drafted uh, Cole Perfetti 7th or 8th overall. But Lucas Raymond, 91 overall, turned into quite the player. He ate a consistent 28 to 30 goal guy. Hasn't quite hit 30 yet, but I'm sure he will. Uh, 80 points. That's quite a player there for LA. I know LA was bad for a long time. They got a lot of really good draft picks like Como, who I believe, yeah, was top three. I always remember seeing the top three guys in the draft, but yeah, they've got a young core. I don't think they're going to be that great right now. Defensively, Drew Doughty is gone. Ooh, where did Drew Doughty go? Um, they got Sergei Ovechkin, the most Russian name of all time. This is exactly what I want uh, Kovalchuk to turn into, just a really good offensive defenseman. Hopefully, Zeus, I mean, they're stacked. And they have a goalie, which is good. Alexander Voinov, another Voinov in L.A. You hate to see it. 
All right, the Minnesota Wild, who just by looking initially could put up the best team in the league. Caden Strite, who was a top five pick. Colin White, who is just a god. And then Yuri Kuleman, who was the first player ever drafted in this franchise mode. If you remember, he was the randomly generated player in year number one. He jumped right into the NHL and just consistently puts up 100 points. He's a beast. But if you remember, six picks after that, we ended up picking the man, the myth, the legend, Valery Chubby Chubisov. Uh, they got Gary Darling, Ryan Donato at an 87, Alex Tuck at an 87, Jaden Schwartz, Rup Hintz, Kasperi Kapanen. Yeah, they're stacked as well. Um, yeah, we're pretty familiar with this team. We played them in the playoffs. They're looking good. And between the pipes, Corpus Allo and Evan Fitzpatrick. You guys need a goalie. The Montreal Canadiens. We got Max Domi, uh, Nikolai Nikitin. 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 That's a weird name. Uh, he was a second rounder. He's a playmaker. He's looking pretty good there. 86 overall. Warren Penner. Uh, we're very familiar with this team. We've made a few moves with them, like Adam Larson, a few other guys as well. Um... If you remember, Kuleman, the guy we just looked at from the Minnesota Wild, he was actually drafted by Montreal, had a bunch of great years there, ended up going to free agency and signing with Minnesota. Um, so they got Ryan Paling, who is an absolute Seattle Storm Bear legend. If you don't know the story about Ryan Paling, I forget how we acquired him. I think we paid like... It was kind of like an Aiden Huxley situation where we kind of knew we had some potential, but his trade value was pretty low. So I think I got him for like a second and a third. And I played him with Agent C in our Seattle franchise mode. And the guy went off. I think he had two 50 goal seasons and then like a 30 goal season and then like another 25 goal season. And then all of a sudden he just fell off the face of the earth. He was like 81 overall and on like the fourth line. It was the weirdest thing. Less than three years removed from scoring over 50 goals and winning Stanley Cups, he's on the fourth line. It was so weird. Uh, defensively, Ghost, Victor Mete. So Ghost is the only real, I guess, elite defenseman on this team. Adam Larson, the best guy of all time, just carved out the greatest career ever. Just a consistent 20-point guy. My favorite guy in the entire world. Thank you. Was Adam Larson the pick that landed us a Gucci? Was that right? Oh, I forget. There's been so many trades. I, it might be. It, I knew it was a lottery pick. So between the pipes, they have Tyler Rankin, who was a starting goalie in the sixth round. Damn, you can find tendies really, really late. All right, as for New Jersey, their center core is insane. Nico Heischer, Jack Hughes, Michael McLeod, Kaspik, they are nasty. Uh, they got this Mikael Lehner guy who was a first rounder. I know he's really good. Look at his uh, puck scales, 97, 96, 99, 96. He is like a Patrick Kane looking player. We got Taylor Hall. We got Boquist, who, yes, is Adam Boquist's younger brother, or I guess older brother. Uh, but he plays for the Devils in real life. He was a second rounder, so that's kind of cool. Maybe we'll have to slow sim some games, get a little Boquist versus Boquist matchup. Uh, Kiefer Bellows, McLeod, yeah, they're stacked. There's a lot of insane teams here. Malik Armsden, Nikita Zadorov. They don't have that one stud, but they have a bunch of really good, well-rounded defensemen. And between the pipes, they have Andre Vasilevsky and Alan Green, who is a medium franchise in the fifth round. It's wild. Vasilevsky was, I think, year number one. He became a restricted free agent, and then New Jersey offered him, which would have been the max, which was like four first-round picks, and they've had him ever since. We got ourselves a Storm Bear legend in the building, Brendan Pierlini, Ryan Johansson, Vitaly Abramov, who is from our short-lived Ottawa franchise mode, Robbie Fabry, Mason Appleton, Nemestikov. Um, they're not super stacked. They just have a bunch of decent-ish, well-rounded guys. I'm not sure why they're playing him. Oh, so he's a winger. They're playing him in the center position. This team is just a mess. But it's okay because they have Boris Yakupov at 97 overall. Yes, that's right. 97. This guy is an absolute monster. He's like a 40-goal-a-year defenseman. 
He is insane. Multiple 40 goal years, multiple years with over 150 penalty minutes. This guy does not mess around. I'd rather fight a full grown lion than fight Boris Yakupov. No thank you. Another Storm Bear legend, Dante Fabro, looking pretty good there. Callie Klingberg, former Saskatchewan Stag. How are ya? As for the attendees, they have Comrie and Ethan Gorin, who looks like he could be the next one, medium starter. And Comrie's only 82, so they have some sort of issue in net. The New York Islanders, Yuka Rutu, I believe was a top pick. Yeah, third overall. I always remember seeing these guys in the top three. 25 years old, two-way forward, he's a beast. Mark Shifley, he went from Winnipeg to Long Island. And then this guy, who I have no idea who he is, but he is a seventh rounder of the Leafs in in 2014 okay I've literally never heard of that guy in my entire life Josh Hosang all right he finally made it uh, we got Vinquist who was another creative player didn't quite turn out as good as everyone else but he's still a pretty consistent 30 goal guy in the NHL so definitely not a bad player at all 88 overall kind of the perfect second line center actually 89 faceoffs Andreas Janssen so a couple of former Leafs there with this guy who apparently is a real player Look at that hair. Damn. How much gel do you think that guy uses in his hair? Oh, my God. Uh, Tom Wilson. Oh, my God. They got Wilson. We got Cole Sillinger, who is a guy that a lot of people in the comments wanted me to go after. He's actually from Saskatchewan, which is pretty awesome. Unfortunately, we weren't going to move up in the draft, but he is way too damn good to be playing on the third line. You guys got to figure it out. Uh, Sergei Sluglobov. Sluglobov? Sl I think Sluglobov sounds way cooler. That guy as well is going to be too good to play on the second line pretty quick. They have a pretty good team there. Defensively, ooh, Bradley Roberts. How are you? Top two defenseman, medium elite, third overall, 22 years old. This guy as well, another top five pick. So it's kind of cool to see all these players who we see in the draft really come through and be elite players in the NHL. Dougie Hamilton, how's it going, bud? So we ended up moving him uh, for a first, which, which I believe turned out to be another lottery pick. Uh, now, Dougie Hamilton is a guy I didn't really want to trade, but we kind of had to. Uh, uh, he's a consistent 50-point guy. I really like Dougie Hamilton. Ilya Samsonov, 92 overall. They're looking good between the pipes. Not a bad team in Long Island at all. Not a bad-looking squad. Moving on to the Rangers. They have Wong, who ended up freezing our franchise mode at one point in time. For some reason, it just froze our entire game. But they got Steen, who I believe was a top pick. Yeah, second overall. He's a beast already, 85 overall. Uh, look at their center depth, 88, 85, 85, 85. They got Zabinijad on the fourth line. You hate to see that. Bushnevik still sticking around. Valerie Nachuskin. Kevin LeBanc, the million-dollar man. Defensively, uh, Keegan Lynch, who is 6'5", 240. That guy is a unit. Oh, my God. What's his physical category like? Yeah, pretty damn good. He is high on my list of do not mess with. What a beast. 6'5", 240. That's like Dustin Bufflin big. That's like scary big. Vince Dunn, Stanley Cup champion with your Saskatchewan Stags and the St. Louis Blues in real life. And they don't have a goalie. They have a 66 overall backup. Imagine being drafted in the sixth round and then the next year you make the team just thrown into the Wolves. Madison Square Garden. Oh my God, the poor guy. They need a goalie in a bad way. All right, the Ottawa Senators, Philip Forsberg, Pierre-Luc Dubois, two players who I did not think would be moved from their original teams, but they end up in Ottawa, of all places, with Brady Kachuk. Uh, they're looking pretty damn good. They got Nolan Foot. We have his older brother, Cal Foot, on our defensive core. Uh, defensively, Hot Sam Bacho. There you go, Julian Dolan. What's up, man? We ended up letting this guy walk in free agency, and I kind of never really talked about it. Uh, we just let him walk because we signed Quinn Hughes, which was a way better player in my opinion. He was a big piece from Buffalo that ended up coming over, but unfortunately never really worked out. Uh, their bottom pairing is really young. Sorry, their middle pairing is really young. This guy was a second overall pick and really good. Merrick Bliznak. This guy's a fourth overall. This guy's a second overall. They are young and they are stacked. They have Connor Hellebuck between the pipes, which is so funny because we had Connor Hellebuck in our Ottawa Senators franchise mode. And if you remember, Connor Hellebuck doesn't allow a third period goal. The Philadelphia Flyers, another team very stacked down the middle. Sean Couturier, Nolan Patrick, Vancouver Canucks legend Jonathan Deline. They got a pretty decent team. Their wingers are a little bit hurting. I mean, maybe what I would do is trade one of these guys for a couple of top six wingers. 
partners, but hey, that's just me. What do I know? It's not like I win Stanley Cups or anything. Ivan Provorov and Gregory McNaughton. What a name. Uh, Provorov is the man, probably has the seat. We got Linus Soderstrom between the pipes and John Bolt. Best goalie name ever. Saved by the Bolt. If only he played for the Lightning. Damn you, hockey gods. Why didn't you make it happen? All right, the Pittsburgh Penguins with no Sidney Crosby, but no Crosby, no Geno, no worries. Look at this squad. Russ, don't call him Ron Tierney, 97 overall, former first overall selection, 22 goals in 24 games, not that bad. Uh, Nick Suzuki, Kyle Connor, who is loving playing with his new team. We got Raphael Flynn and Jared McCann, who's an 89, which still baffles me every time I see it. Uh, Tolvanen, Boone Jenner, Ryan Nugent Hawk, so they are absolutely stacked defensively it looks pretty damn good as well Seth Jones and Nico Berg that's not bad and between the pipes they have Corsten who's a 23 year old medium starter so they got a pretty good team I know they're still working some things out I mean if they get a goalie they could be a serious team pretty quick here Isaac Robbins and the San Jose Sharks all right we're almost done here uh, he's 89 overall. He turned out to be really, really good. But there's still that battle between Jake DeBoer and Isaac Robbins. He won the Calder, but DeBoer's having quite a good year as well. Um, their center depth is a little bit weak. They're okay, I guess. Uh, defensively, Emmanuel Mahalik, my favorite guy. How's it going, buddy? Hope you're enjoying the beautiful California weather. He's playing with Ryan Merkley, a perfect one-two punch. Defensive guy, offensive guy, that's perfect. And they have a goalie, I guess, in Tristan Jari, but it could be a lot better. But Jari is a lot better than some of the goalies we've seen on these teams. The Blues and Kip Hansen. Remember this guy scoring a ton of goals on us. This guy lit us up the one time we played him in the postseason. He had 46 last year. He had 62 in the AHL, which is bananas. He scores in bunches. It was so annoying. Uh, Robert Thomas, they got Caden Glenn, who is a top 10 pick. Turned out to be amazing for them, 91 overall. Uh, they got Tarasenko, still 88 overall. Ryan O'Reilly, the perfect human being. They got a good young team. I like their team over here in San Jose. Rasmus Dahlin, not bad. That definitely helps out. Philip Broberg and Saskatchewan Stag legend Connor Murphy. Who's that guy? What the hell's a group post in Call of Duty 4? Recording a franchise mode video. What are you doing? They still have Jordan Bennington between the pipes, which is awesome. I love that. Uh, moving on to Tampa Bay. Malikov, Point, Kucherov. So no more Stamkos for them. Uh, Taylor Radish, Jonathan Druan went back to his original team, which is hilarious. Uh, Martin Kaut, Logan Brown. They're pretty damn good. They're pretty nasty. Defensively, Sergachev, Lindholm, Thompson, Lindgren. I remember their defense always being really, really good. And no Vasilevsky, but it's okay. They got John Gibson and Stuart Skinner between the pipes. The Toronto Maple Leafs, they got Dalton Forbes, 24 years old. The second last player taken in the first round in 2021. Turned out to be a first liner. Uh, Jesperi Kakaniemi goes from Montreal to Toronto. You love to see it. Mitch Marner, somehow they got him signed. Uh, Eight million bucks for seven years. Will Nye, the hockey guy. Tyson Jost and Levi Altonen. So not a bad top four at all. Henrik Borgstrom, who we were scouting in free agency. But yeah, they got a nice team over there in Toronto, that's for sure. Their defense isn't great. Timothy Liljegren is the only bright spot there. And between the pipes, oh, you know him. You love him. Big Germ. Oh, man, I missed this guy. Uh, he ended up going six. Oh, man, he is having a rough start to the year once again. He was absolutely outstanding for your Saskatchewan Stags, having years like 51 and 17, 44 and 16. Guy's a freak, but going to a Toronto team that needs some help on the back end, you know, maybe Tyson Jost, maybe a little bit too good for your second line, maybe make some trades for another top two defenseman. Maybe that would help out Big Germ. Just coming from experience, you know, we always had pretty good defensemen in front of Big Germ, and it seemed to work out pretty good for us. Vancouver, another team we're very familiar with, Kachuk, Pedersen, Brock Besser. Oh man, this makes me so sad. This line could be a real thing. It could have been a real thing, but the Canucks ended up drafting Ole Levy. Okay, we're not going to talk about it. Moving on. JT Miller, which is funny because the Canucks actually signed him in real life. Uh, William Carlson, Jacob Verana. Pretty good second line there. Connor Brown, Saskatchewan Stag legend. Isaac Rollings. Uh, we got Troy Terry, Bo Horvat on the fourth line. Hate to see that. 
Uh, they got Ole Ulevi, who actually turned out to be not a bad defenseman. Kelly Adams, Damon Severinsen, Marcus Nudavara, Brendan Dillon, so not bad. And then Thatcher Demko between the pipes. So their top six is just nasty over there in Vancouver. Vegas, all right, we're almost done. This guy, he was a top three pick. That's right, third overall. Look at his shooting category, 99s. Oh boy, this guy is good. He is a freak. This is his third year in the NHL, but he is a monster. Watch out for this guy. Miroslav Ivanins playing alongside Gensel and Emmanuel Furland, who I thought for a second was Michael Furland, but it's definitely not. He's quite a bit better than Michael Furland ever would be. Uh, they got Mark Stone. As On their second line, they have Malikov. Oh my god. He was a top five pick, 93 overall. They are just stacked. Mark Stone, see Lafreniere either. They have four 90s right here. That's crazy. It just keeps getting better on this team. Uh, Cody Glass, like they are stacked. Alexis Lafreniere, he's 26 years old. Obviously he was one of, oh man, he's got a couple hundred point years under his belt. I believe he was the second overall pick. Yeah, there he is. Second overall, he's a monster. Uh, let's look at their defense here. Noah Hannafin, Nesterov, Shea Theodore, Alexandriov. They might have the best team in the, in the entire league. Four 90s on their offensive core. Do they have a goalie? Please have a goalie. They don't have a goalie. Francis Sotheby, who is 7-0, it looks like, this year, who is 24 years old, hasn't lost a game yet. He's got a shutout, so watch out for him. And I guess they have Vili Husso, who is technically a starter. So, you know what? I'd say they probably have the best team in the league. That's crazy. The Winnipeg Jets. All right, so Capo Caco, Christian Dvorak, Nikolai Ehlers, Patrick Laine. Yeah, we are very, very familiar with this team. We might have to meet them in the postseason once again coming up here. Obviously, we've looked at them a ton. Their defense has never really been super, super strong. Uh, between the pipes, they have, oh my God, another goaltending controversy. So they had Big Mac and they had, obviously, Connor Hellebuck. Now they got Vitaly Kozlov, who's a fifth rounder, medium elite. Oh man, he's knocking on the door, Big Mac. Don't let him in. He's going to take your job. All right, the Washington Capitals here. Still looking for where Drew Doughty is. Uh, but Maxime Dumont, he was the third overall pick behind Jake DeBoer and Isaac Robbins. And he might be the best of the bunch. 89 overall. He had 34 goals in his rookie year. 89 overall. I think he's tied with Robbins, but that's insane. Uh, Matthew Barzell, which went from Long Island to the Caps. Walter Bull, Gustafson, Kuznetsov, who's still killing it. Philip Heedle, uh, their center depth is nasty. Brendan Gallagher, Connor Sherry. Defensively, where is uh, Drew Doughty? Did I miss him? I'll have to go and search for him. But Bobby Lemieux, he was a guy who was selected second overall. He's an absolute beast. I know I've said that a million times about every player, but he has not had a season less than 30 goals since his rookie year as a defenseman. That is nuts. Then the goalies, Junior Spalling, who was a former Saskatchewan Stag draft pick he's 80 overall he looks like he's the starter i remember i said i wanted to help them out he's got 10 wins in his first 17 games not bad at all and that's it there is your look around the nhl now did i just miss drew doughty did he retire is he a free agent now did i miss drew doughty did i just like skip over him because i know he wasn't on la uh, let's see. Let's see where he is. Drew Doughty. He's not a forward. He is a defenseman. No players found. Did I spell that right? Doughty? D-O-U-G-H-T-Y? Did he seriously retire? I don't remember that. Why would he retire? Is it 2027? He should be, should be still around. I mean, it would make him 38 years old in 2027, so maybe he retired last year. I just didn't really notice it. Maybe? I don't know. So out of everyone looking around, I'm going to say that the Vegas Golden Knights probably have the best team in the entire NHL. They are just stacked in every single position. Defensively, they're absolutely nasty. Goaltending, it's not great, but it's pretty good. It could be a lot worse. I mean, there's some teams that have like a 66 overall backup and like a 75 overall starter. But yeah, it's... I'm pretty sure Vegas has the best team. You guys can let me know who you think has the best team in the NHL. I'm going to go with Vegas, though.
Now, unfortunately, I think it's time to trade Anthony Sorelli. I know it's not going to be a popular decision, although there is some people, I did see quite a few comments that were telling me, you know, it's nice, the whole Anthony Sorelli story, it's great, but I think it's time to move on. And you know what? I think you're right, because at the end of the day, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's either one of two options. We could trade either Sorelli or we could trade the big kid from Edmonton. Now, the big kid from Edmonton is kind of the perfect fourth line winger. I really, really like him and he has a little bit more trade value so I think I'm going to hang on to the big kid as well I'm also going to hang on to where is he Marcus Marcus the snake Ovechkin that's going to be his new nickname two s's Marcus uh, he has 77 face-offs he's ready to jump into the NHL so I am going to go ahead and trade Anthony Sorelli but out of respect for Anthony Sorelli I'm going to keep him as the player on on our thumbnail because he's an absolute legend he has multiple Stanley Cups with us went from being the second line center the third line center now he's a fourth line center and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trade him straight up for a backup goalie because I don't think having a 77 overall goaltender is the way to go obviously Malcolm Subban we could probably use a better goalie so I'm going to shop around Anthony Sorelli I'm sorry buddy but your time is up all good things must come to an end. Anthony Sorelli, you're going to be moving, but you're not going to be moving that far because I'm going to trade you to the Winnipeg Jets, our next door neighbor, and we are going to get a backup goalie in exchange, Johnny Forrest. What a fantastic name. Obviously, we're called the Stags, which is a deer. Where did deer live? in the forest. This is just going to be perfect. This was made to happen. Johnny Forrest. Now he's a former fourth rounder. They already have quite a goaltending controversy over there in Winnipeg. They have obviously Big Mac and I think his name is Kozlov. Yeah, there it is. So they are seriously, they have too many issues. They don't really need this guy. So we're going to go ahead and take him off their hands. We're going to have to add a little bit more because Forrest actually does have a decent chunk of trade value and he is 81 overall. So we're going to throw in Seth Jarvis this card guy who as well 24 years old we are going to move on from as well so this should go through they want anthony sorelli trade rejected okay yikes um again if i'm gonna have to add like a pick or whatever i'm not super worried about this it's a pretty decent backup goalie i mean we have four first round picks this year so if i have to add a third it's not the end of the world that should go through he's a pretty good backup goalie forest welcome to the stags on behalf of the winnipeg jets we accept this trade offer i hate to trade anthony sorelli but Marcus Ovechkin, Marcus the Snake, he's here, he's ready. I'm excited for him. It's going to be a good fit on the fourth line. And then Malcolm Subban, we're going to send him down, put him on waivers. If he gets claimed, great. He doesn't. Okay, there you go. Now we're going to give Donnie Forrest the start in the next game. We're going to throw him right in, playing in the AHL, jumping all the way up to the big leagues, kid. And then Marcus the Snake Ovechkin going to play on the fourth line. AHL, we got to do the best lines. Fiddler, I'm sorry, buddy. Your time will come, I promise. Oh, man, I really need to get him in the NHL as well. I just want him to be kind of that playoff performer where he's going to come in, there's going to be an injury. Oh, we got a waiver player, uh, Emmelin. Uh, what I was going to say is I want there to be an injury in the playoffs. Obviously, I don't want there to be an injury, but there could be an injury. And then he jumps right in, and he uh, he earns his spot on the team. And I'm actually going to pick up this guy from Winnipeg. He's a second rounder, 25 years old. So it's basically like swapping players. So we gave them like a, I think we gave him Seth Jarvis, who was a 25-year-old, 75 overall player or whatever so basically swapping players there you go welcome to the Regina Renegades he's gonna go ahead and play in the AHL so that's a really good trade we get a player off waivers thanks Winnipeg I'll take that any day of the week yeah, that's awesome. Our AHL team's nasty. I'm happy with that. All right, so Forrest is getting his first start. We got Marcus the Snake Ovechkin on the fourth line. Let's go against Jack Hughes and the New Jersey Devils. We know how nasty they are. We just saw their team. First start for Forrest. Let's go, period. Number one, and it's 2 nothing. Sujimoto and Jesper Franzen. Could that be assisted by the man, the myth, the snake himself, Marcus Ovechkin? Period number two. All right, 3-2, lots of goals. Sujimoto, Taylor Hall, and Tokarski. 
Okay, so apparently Russ Delmore is in the pipes, even though I put Forrest in there. You guys clearly saw me put him first. I didn't go best lines. And Laner, he scores, but Jack Hughes comes right back. We're blowing this lead. That is three out of four goals have been straight from New Jersey. Come on, boys. Give me an Adam Boquist goal against his brother. The Boquist brothers going head to head. Come on. We need one. We need one. One minute left. Come on. Oh, yikes. You hate to see it. All right. Well, we lose that game. I wanted Forrest to get in there, though. Come on. That's annoying. You guys saw me put him in. Maybe I have to put him on there like the day of, like right now, instead of doing it and then simulating to the game. Maybe the computer puts him in during the simulation. I don't know. Let's put him in right now, and then we'll see if he's going to get the start. Also, shout out to the snake, getting an assist in his first game. That's awesome. All right, Forrest, now you're getting your start. Johnny Forrest. That is one of the greatest names ever. Johnny Forrest. What is All right, here we go. The 17-7 and Saskatchewan Stags versus the 15-10-0 and Buffalo Sabres with Jack Eichel, Alex Nylander. Let's go. Period number one. And it's 2 nothing. Hiroyuki gets both of them. Period number two. All right, 3-2. So Forrest allows three in the second period. Not a great second for the kid at all. But come on, offense. Work for your rookie goalie here. It's his first start in front of the home fans. But Cole Lind, the Vancouver Canucks prospect, he makes it 4-2. Oh, boy. Eichel makes it 5-2. We get one. Hiroyuki completes the hat trick. But unfortunately, Forrest lets that one slip past him. And he drops game number one of his NHL career. All right. So generally, I usually go up to the end of the month. But we have a game on the 7th, which is against the Detroit Red Wings. You guys know. No, I have to slow sim that because if you want a little update here, Nika Solani has 44 points and Aguchi has 31 in the matchup that we've played. So I'm hoping, I mean, obviously he's not going to get like 13 points or whatever, but I'm hoping he can close the gap a little bit because the past three or four games, it's really, really been just the Aguchi show. Sorry, big germ had to beat you in overtime there. Probably. That was probably a Noguchi bar down snipe in overtime. Uh, so we're losing a couple of games here. I don't love this. 19, 10, and 1. 20, 10, and 1. There you go. Up against Agent C and the Arizona Coyotes. We squeak a win out in the shootout. We've won three of our last four. There it is. Boom. Big victory. That's what I'm talking about. Getting back in the winning category. Our HL team's doing great. We have almost a week off. Up against Washington. They're pretty damn good as well. And there's a big win. 6-5. to five. Up against the Canucks. Another win. There you go. We're rolling right now. We got Boris Yakupov coming up after the Blues, and then we got the Detroit Red Wings, and that is going to wrap up this video. Another win against the Blues, and another win against the Nashville Predators and Boris Yakupov up against the 25, 6, and 7 Detroit Red Wings. Just to remind you, Aguchi has 31 points, Solani has 40 Four. All right, let's go. Detroit is in the building. There's a gas mask on everyone's seat as well as a large double-double or an ice cap, depending on what your preference is, at your seat in the Tim Horton Center. We want you to be comfortable with gas mask. Obviously, we want you to be hydrated with the good old Tim's coffee or a Tim's ice cap. But Joe Valeno, I was talking shit about him earlier, and he scores. And, of course, we start Forrest against Nika Solani. Allows the first shot of the night. Oh boy, period number one, it's 2 nothing. Lawrence and Valeno, the second line center and the third line center, period number two. All right, 3 nothing. Valeno, he knew I was talking shit about him. Sujimoto gets one. All right, they started their backup as well. Come on, there you go, Jake to score. He gets one. We're within reach, and Justin Falk completes it. That's three goals in four minutes. Can we keep it going? Nothing from Aguchi, nothing from Solani quite yet. 40 shots to 30. Are we going into overtime? Are we going into OT? Come on, this will be a perfect chance for Aguchi to score the overtime winner. Or we're going into a shootout. What's it going to be? It is a... Oh, man. Who's that guy? Bergen? I don't even remember seeing him on the team. Do you just call him up? My batteries are low. What's going on? This is the worst. How many points did Nika Solani have? He had no points? Really? Did he just take the night off? Wow. Okay. That would have been a great time for Aguchi to really set the tone, get a couple of points. He gets one, so he's up to 32 points. All right, still some work to do, that's for sure. 
All right, so that is going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Oh my God, neat. Oh my God, Sujimoto. Jesus, 64 points in 39 games, calm down. Oh my. There's a lot of points being scored in the National Hockey League. Jake DeBoer has got 30 and 39. Not a bad sophomore year at all. I'll take it, buddy. Norm Clarkson with 29. Cole Profetti with 29. So, Norm Clarkson coming for your job, Profetti. Chubbs as well, only 26, which isn't that bad, but for the second line, something's got to change. I might change something up here. Maybe we'll do an experiment for the next video, but Gino's got 24 on the third line, which is awesome. Uh, I want to check out how Marcus Ovechkin's doing. He's got six assists in 15 games, and Kovachuk has one goal. He's now a plus player, which is nice, but only four helpers. Hmm, Kovachuk, interesting. Forrest is 3-1, and, and Domore is 21-8. and eight. Just for fun, a quick look around the NHL, just because. As for rookie skaters, no one's super crazy. I mean, a couple decent rookies this year. As for all skaters, how many goals does Oscar Gormley have? But Sujimoto leading the way in points. You'd love to see it. Oscar Gormley and Chase Verisi are within a goal of each other. 35 goals in 39 games. Oh boy. We could have an Art Ross winner here with Sujimoto. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm sorry, Anthony Sorelli, I had to trade you. Deep down, you're always going to be my favorite. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.